By 1988, Star Trek had aired the original series, an animated series, and was into the second season of The Next Generation, along with four feature films so far that had been released. Ten years before the immersive Star Trek The Experience opened in Las Vegas, the first Star Trek attraction opened. This time, firstly at Universal Studios Hollywood, followed by Universal Studios Florida. The captain, the Vulcan. Come on, Leonard, it's the captain that makes things happen. It's his story. Bill, get serious. The audience watches the Vulcan. Stop! This bickering is pointless. It is most illogical. Studios, where you learn Hollywood secrets. Over 40 years ago, Universal Studios Hollywood, then known as the Universal Studio Tour, debuted a new venue that would be home to the Screen Test Theatre. This new interactive experience gave guests the chance to act in a Universal Studios production. The first version, in 1975, was based on the TV show Emergency. Guests would recreate nine live scenes on stage in front of an audience of nearly 2,000 spectators, which would be intercut with actual footage. Monitors overhead would then show the footage as each performance was then shown as a mini episode of the show, similar to what Disaster would do many years later. What was also special was that each actor was chosen right before each performance began. The show was extremely popular and throughout the years would be updated with a new version of the show. Turn on the gas, let's put him to sleep. In 1978, Airport 77 debuted, with the same format loosely based on the successful Airport franchise. With a much more complicated set, it included a first class section of a 747 plane, a cockpit and a large tank of water. The new version showcased a plane crashing and guests even being in the water for some of the shots. The final version of the show was another refresh that was based on the movies known as The Great Chase. In our screen test comedy theater, we present one of the wackiest and funniest chase scenes ever concocted. We cast about 35 people right out of the audience to play starring roles. Debuting in 1984, the show now had a mixture of seven different scenes ranging from an Old West bank robbery to a boat ride down a river. Once again, the show was extremely popular and getting the chance to act in a Universal movie was one of the most memorable experiences of visiting the park. I'm doing my best. Oh, our mother was right. I should never have taken it with you. Poor devils. This version closed in 1987, with the outdoor theatre undergoing a huge renovation, adding a roof and walls to make it a fully-fledged indoor theatre. With it came a new show, taking guests for the first time into space and the world of Star Trek. The new experience cost $7 million to create and featured cutting-edge technology. The Panasonic Theatre could house over 1,200 seating guests in the upper lot of the park. Based on one of the most popular series on television of the time, the live-action show took guests into space to join Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock in battling Klingons, space creatures, and aliens. The new show was announced in early 1988, 22 years after Star Trek debuted with a press kit that contained a four-page United Federation of Planets directive presenting a format for broadcasters to give away admission tickets for the new attraction. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to a behind-the-scenes visit to the world of motion picture and television magic as we create a never-before-seen movie in front of your eyes through the talents of writers, technicians, designers, craftspersons, and members of this audience. You are about to go where you have never gone before. And Universal Studios and Paramount Pictures proudly present The Star Trek Adventure. The Star Trek Adventure opened on June 9th, 1988, with Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek creator, and some of the cast in attendance, including George Takai, James Doohan, and of course, William Shatner. Imagine there'll be people here in their own costumes, uh, thinking that they're flying a spaceship. And uh, the, the illusion is here. Leonard Nimoy was the only cast member not in attendance, as he was directing a film in Canada at the time. Around 1,500 Trekkies were invited to the premiere performance, who were the first to respond to a mailing of 26,000 invitations sent to different Star Trek fan clubs. 29 audience members would seemingly appear in the feature, portraying a variety of different characters. The audience participants were given a script or a role to play that would be cut in with clips from Captain Kirk, Spock, Dr. McCoy or Scotty. Ten selected guests will be given Starfleet uniforms and become the crew of the Enterprise. To get the role of the Klingon captain, you had to compete in a growl-off with the runners-up playing his crew members. A younger audience member would become a dragon hound based on the Klingon reptilian dog seen in the search for Spock. Other guests became the ground crew or various alien preceptors. The sets on stage were quite impressive each built on a turntable rotating, with locations such as the bridge of the Klingon Bird of Prey, a transporter room, an alien planet, and of course the engineering and bridge of the USS Enterprise. This was one of the first times guests could stand on a completed set of the bridge, a dream for many Star Trek fans. Our story this evening involves an encounter between the Enterprise crew and their arch enemies, the Klingons, and later we're gonna meet a third group that's even more powerful than either of them. Your big moment. The story of the mini episode had the Enterprise on course to a Kumau 7, but once arriving, it is intercepted by a Klingon bird of prey whose captain decided on attacking the Enterprise. Mid battle, both vessels are rendered inoperative by a strange energy field originating from the planet. Hang on! Determined to find out more, an away team is beamed down, only to discover a Klingon away team as well. Fighting of course ensues until a strange creature attacks the Klingons. The Starfleet team would then save the Klingons, much to their dismay. Attacked by a strange creature. You've got to rescue them, even though they are Klingons. After returning to the vessels, the Enterprise finds itself attacked by a larger version of the same creature. The Klingon captain sees the chance to redeem himself and saves the Enterprise by destroying it. I'm getting a voice message. Klingons and Federation members, we are the preceptors, the teachers. All you have experienced here has been illusion, a test to see if you are capable of peaceful coexistence. The ending reveals that the experience was an illusion by the omnipotent species, the Preceptors, who had done it to show both crews the error of their ways. Classic Star Trek. Mr. Scott. Aye, sir. We'll be going to warp speed. Each scene was recorded on video on the physical sets and intercut with the stock footage from the movies, edited into an 8 minute short film before being shown to the audience on monitors. The attraction was created by Universal along with the help of multiple other companies, one of which was McFadden Systems, who 10 years later would work on Star Trek The Experience. Much of the film used was taken from different Trek movies. Some additional special effects were created and they were shot at Universal Studios. They used the actual production studio models from the films. No scenes with the cast were shot except for a voiceover by William Shatner. After the show, the short film could then be purchased by guests on VHS costing $35. The adventure could run 10 shows a day with new performers and a new VHS being made every 30 minutes. Marvelous. Everybody on the mark. Zoom the position. You need to stand there with your heels along the back edge of the pedestal, face up. 
and hold very still. Don't move during the beeping process. We have some coordinates that have been punched into the computer. That's where we're going to beam the two roll cameras, Wilson and Energize. Star Trek Adventure was an instant hit with huge praise from audience and participants. The experience even offered some shows in Spanish at certain times to try and attract even more visitors. In fact, it was so popular, it spawned a cut down sister version at Universal Studios Florida. Hello, and welcome to Universal Studios Star Trek Adventure, courtesy of Paramount Pictures. I'm Gene Roddenberry, and some of you may know me as the creator of Star Trek. In its second year of operation, the park down in Florida added several new experiences to its lineup. The Street Busters show, the Blues Brothers show, and the Back to the Future ride. One unique addition was called the Screen Test Home Video Adventure, and once again you could star in a special episode of Star Trek. Though this time there were no sets in sight, and it was not included in park admission. It was essentially the first upcharge attraction. To participate, you had to buy the VHS at a cost of $29.95. The experience was located right next to Confrontation. Opening on March 25th, 1991, the experience named Screen Test Home Video Adventure, sponsored by JVC, offered guests the chance to star in their own movie. Using blue screen chroma key, the park inserted guest footage into newly filmed scenes with Star Trek actors, for the Star Trek adventure, creating a 10 minute VHS. Unlike Hollywood, due to the use of the blue screen, the Star Trek actors had to shoot new footage for the guests to be inserted into. Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner were filmed for the introductory sequence, whereas the secondary cast filmed additional scenes on the recreated Enterprise set at Universal Hollywood. Since the method for the attraction was different, it also meant less people could be involved, with only five per film at one time and no live audience to watch. Just you and four other people in front of a blue screen and maybe a captain's chair. No further effects were needed and stop footage from the movies was once again used to fill in the remaining scenes. The experience also featured a different, less ambitious story. The episode you're about to see is a first. It's the first time guest stars have ever played the roles of the captain of the Enterprise and the Vulcan science officer. We'll now give you a peek at the rehearsal session that went on between our guest stars and their two directors, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. He then shows a peek at the rehearsal session of the episode, with Shatner and Nimoy's new scenes next to the inserted guests. Indeed, I think it's time to, to boldly go, go where, where no, no man, man has gone, gone before. before. Medical log, stardate 8707.2. Dr. McCoy reporting. The crew of the Enterprise is busy readying itself for an ordeal that I'm sure will prove to be trying. A Starfleet training mission. Below us on Earth, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock are attending a conference at Federation headquarters, which makes them unable to help supervise the new graduates. It was time to go boldly where no one had been before. Well, at least as much as you could in front of a blue screen anyway. On the bridge of the Enterprise, McCoy is informed that the graduates are ready to beam aboard, greeted by Scotty, who informs him that they are expected on the bridge. What is this button doing? Please don't touch that. <laughs> Let's test the ship's phasers. Not now. That would be very dangerous. I'm Captain Dave Wright. I'm pleased to serve you as your commander. I'm Science Officer Adam Nevitt, reporting for duty. Just what we need, another Vulcan. Out in space, the Enterprise detects another Federation Miranda-class vessel that is not responded to communications. The graduates are beamed aboard the commandeered Federation vessel to delay Kraut long enough from attacking the Enterprise further by bluffing to detonate a photon detonator. It ends with the Klingons being taken into custody. Medical log, supplemental. The Starfleet graduates have certainly proven themselves far better than I could have possibly imagined. The Federation has reached an agreement with the Klingons, which hopefully, in time, will mature into a peace treaty. Crawl will be turned over to a Klingon military court for sentencing. So, all in all, I'd say this mission was a complete success. Well, Captain, what now? Mr. Sulu, head warp factor five. 
Sounds logical to me. Hi, Captain. While plenty cheesy and fun, the whole experience was a lot less ambitious than its Hollywood counterpart. It did offer a good keepsake video with a VHS for the family, and escape from the hot sun at least using the latest technology. The screen test home video adventure, sponsored by JVC, also offered a second option which was less popular, but still a fun experience. Guests could be inserted into another video, Your Day at Universal Studios. This version had guests chroma keyed into a day out at Universal, showing them on rides, shows, and interacting with park characters. While the Hollywood version of Star Trek Adventure was undoubtedly the better experience, both left guests with a chance to take home a VHS that, looking back on today, captures the essence of the park's movie studio history of the past. The Hollywood version closed in 1994 being replaced by The Flintstones Show, the third musical show at the time after Beetlejuice's Graveyard Review and An American Tale Show. It was later again replaced by Totally Nickelodeon, The Rugrats Magical Adventure, and later the next renovation of the theatre was Shrek 4D, where the once Star Trek Adventure dressing room became the pre-show area. Now the theatre is home to the DreamWorks Theatre. Big breaks happen every day of the year at Universal's Screen Test Adventure, and now it's our guest's turn. Break a leg, actors! As for the Universal Studios Florida version, it's now the home of the Mummy Lockers and the Extended Line. Closing two years after the Hollywood version, in 1996, a year later, the space would find a new purpose. The Islands of Adventure Preview Center. Inside, guests could preview attractions and scale models for the brand new theme park, opening next door in 1999. Each island for the new part was displayed, including one fully original concept not based on an IP. The place we'll be heading to on the next expedition. An attraction that not only was shown in this preview center, also shares a similar effect to Star Trek The Experience in Vegas. This is a mysterious land filled with romance and adventure. Within these ancient walls, this fateful story is forever preserved. Poseidon's fury, escape from the lost city. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Universal Studios Florida. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe to join the expedition as we continue to the park next door. Today, Star Trek attractions are hard to come by, with the only notable option being Star Trek Operation Enterprise at Movie Park in Germany. Would you like to see Star Trek return to a theme park in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes, and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.